Hey guys, welcome to Pellets and Pits. Hey, today is all about a smoked roast beef. We marinate it in like a wine, honey, garlic, and mustard. We smoked it for a while. We got that really good woodsy smoke. We made a sandwich out of it. Matter of fact, it came out fantastic. Do you guys want to see this smoky smoked roast beef on a pellet smoker? Here we go. All right, to get started, uh, we got a little list of ingredients to run through. Uh, we'll kind of make it as we go. The whole idea is to make that port wine marinade. So really quickly, we got the port. We got some uh, olive oil, some Dijon mustard, some W sauce. We have some honey, some rosemary, some, uh, what do you call it? Garlic, uh, not garlic, onion, minced onion, some thyme and some garlic. This marinade, of course, will be on pellets and pits. W sauce, minced onion, rosemary, one teaspoon thyme, one tablespoon Dijon mustard, one tablespoon honey, one cup of wine, two large cloves of garlic, finely sliced or chopped, it doesn't matter. Just give that a mix, incorporate all those ingredients, set that to the side, and we can start trimming our beef. All right, as you can see, we have a whole eye round roast. It was on sale, $4.98 a pound. That's a fantastic price today. Um, you know, we look at the uh, the deli market. Uh, I think roast beef, I think it was $15.99 a pound. I'm like, geez, we can make it ourselves, right? That's a good thing about homemade ingredients. You know what's in it. We're gonna do, do a little bit of trimming. Just working your knife underneath that silver skin, getting all that knocked off there because you're definitely not gonna eat that. She's all trimmed up, looking good, looking good. I decided to keep the fat cap on there. That's completely up to you. From there, it's simple. We're just gonna put it in the marinade, take the air out of it, let it refrigerate overnight. I'll probably flip it before I go to bed, just to make sure. And then um, we'll flip it probably in the morning and then bring it up to temperature and start smoking it. Alrighty, overnight, and a few hours later, we are rocking roughly 15 hours of soak time. Just kind of let that drain naturally. I'm actually gonna keep some of that liquid on there. I'm not gonna pat it dry or anything. So now what we're gonna do is a long game. Now I'm gonna do is add some salt. If you do this, you need to be careful about what kind of seasoning you're gonna use uh, before you smoke it, because we're gonna add a little bit of salt to brine it, bring out those moistures. My idea is maybe since it's uh, marinated or soaked in wine, then I'll pull some of those juices out, grab that salt and suck it right back in. So that's the idea. And I don't wanna to go too much. Jeez, it smells good. I know that. If it smells that good before we even start, we got a fighting chance here. I'm excited about this one. It's been a while since I've had a good roast beef sandwich. All right, it's a little bit later in the day. Today's pellet of choice is gonna be smoking pecan. They did send these to me for free. We actually have multiple boxes. We're gonna be testing these out very, very seriously um, in the next few videos. I have dumped all the pellets out. It should be as empty as it could be. And we're gonna use nothing but these pecan pellets today. One thing I did learn about these uh, pecan pellets was actually it's not become from uh, pecan trees. They're actually from the actual shell itself. So it's sustainable like resource, you know, so you're not cutting down trees. I thought that was interesting. It doesn't change my opinion one way or the other, but the fact that they've already got the pecan shells on their land and they're able to develop these into shells, we'll see about the flavor and time and burn, but pretty neat. Show you real quick about the size. It actually looks pretty small compared to some of the other pellets lengthwise. So this is roughly five hours later. We'll take that out. You see some of that moisture that escaped. That's probably, probably a good thing. Probably a good thing. See, there's not a lot of salt on there. It was able to come up, redistribute back into the meat. So that's what we're looking for. So this side's a little bit thinner. I'm just gonna trust that a little bit, just to hedge our bet, try to make an equal size roast beef. So 
So what that does, it shortens up that tail, adds a little bit more girth. We'll be able to smoke it just a little bit longer for a little bit more flavor. And there we go. Should be able to sit on the smoker just like that. For the seasoning, we're using that all-purpose rub that we could just call it Texas, that uh, salt, pepper, garlic, and uh, seasoned salt. Remember, we've already salted this, so we're going a little bit light on this, and then we hit it some more black pepper on the end. All right, he got these fancy dancy temp spikes. We're gonna try these, we've been trying these out lately. So let's just start from here, go on both sides. Why not? <sighs> Definitely late to the wireless thermometer game, I can tell you that, but better late than never. There we go. All right, so our target temperature is going to be about 130. Um, with the low temperatures on the smoker, I doubt that there's going to be a lot of carryover. So we're going to go about that 130 mark. Wouldn't you know it? One side says 131, one side says 129. My target temperature is about 130. We'll call it good. So not much to do. I'm just going to take it off here. I can't help the rain. That's the benefit of cooking outside. So I'm going to make like a horseradish sauce. It's very similar to the horseradish sauce we have already on pellets and pits. If you guys want to see that recipe, you can look that up. I can list it in the link below or in the description below. But I'm looking at like equal parts mayonnaise, equal parts sour cream. Hit it with some W sauce, maybe about a tablespoon. I'm just eyeballing it, folks. And we like the horseradish, so we're not scared of it. So maybe a couple tablespoons, or at least a tablespoon. I'm not gonna add salt and pepper or anything like that. I think the roast beef's gonna have plenty of it on there. You can add some Dijon mustard if you wanted to. Typically that goes in there, but keeping it basic. That worked. At this point, if you wanted to, you could actually let it rest overnight. But I am not that patient. I already let it marinate overnight. We're not making a three-day roast beef. All right, we have our meat slicer out because just like any good husband out there, if you rant and rant and rant and rant for months and months and months, how if you had this one piece of equipment, you'll always use it. You'll, you just need that one piece of equipment. That's the thing that's holding you back is one piece of equipment. So when I thought I was going to hand slice it, she said, didn't we buy you a slicer? And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I planned on using. So we have it out today. So I'm gonna go right in the middle. Ooh. Kind of that soft edge to edge. Not really any overcooking on the edges. Mm. It looks good. That so. looks good. I like my roast beef pretty thin, so we're gonna keep it like that. But that right there is not shabby at all. Just look at that juice in there. Mm. Mm. Man, I didn't miss on that one. Mm. I didn't miss on that one. Oh, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> mm. What do you think about the wine? I can't stop eating it. It's good. <laughs> it's super good. The wine gives it like a very subtle, sweet taste. Very, very subtle. Yep. What and there's just a touch of honey in there as well. Mm -hmm. The acidity, I think, helps break down the beef. Uh, I don't think it's over seasoned. Mm -hmm. I like the black pepper. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I like the herbs. And typically, I'm not an herb type of guy. It's super good. <laughs> Well, let's, let's, however, let's try it with the sauce. Well, you just keep trying it. I am. It's like the pork. <laughs> we won't have any left. I'm going to start making two. Um, mm, with that sauce. Yeah. Mm. However you make it or however you decide to eat it after that's up to you. We're just going to do a classic sourdough sandwich. Get that spread all the way on there. Maybe hit it with some of that lettuce. We might not have seasoned the uh, sauce, but we're definitely seasoning those tomatoes. Here with those tomatoes and onions. Mm -hmm. 
guaranteed when you make it yourself, you're going to add a little bit more roast beef on there than what the stores do. <laughs> when you only pay four ninety eight a pound, you don't care to pile it high. That's true. All righty, all righty, all righty. Boy, that's what you call a roast beef sandwich. That work? Mm. All right. Like anything else, got a lot jaw this thing. Remove the toothpick. Oh, yeah. I can tell you right now. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm. That's good. I, if I had one critique, I would say we should have cut it a little bit thinner. The roast beef? Yeah. Cut it a little bit thinner. She's the toughest one out there. All right, guys, there you go. There's a smoked roast beef on a pellet smoker. Uh, piggybacking off those uh, pecan shells. I think for me, it's going to be about head-to-head uh, -head competition. Like, I I don't know if I have refined or deep enough or concentrated palate enough with every, all the flavors coming on that I can say 100% that, like, oh, it's a great pellet. I do know that off-camera, I mentioned to her without not even thinking, man, it seems like it's kind of, it does have, like, a little bit smokier flavor than what I expected. It was only on the smoker, what, two hours? Yeah. Uh, so that surprised me. Could that be cause the shells? I mean, it's got to help some. Um, but I think it's going to really come down to more of a head to head. I don't know if I could, I definitely can't tell you it's pecan versus apple or cherry. I'm just not that good. Or when it comes to like a blend of pellets. So, uh, we'll have to get that figured out down the road, but there we go. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, share with your friends. Peace. Mm. Take that to work. Give me another bite. I you know, know people it's... would be stealing your lunch if you took that to work. That's a heck of a sandwich.